All right, folks, today I've got a lot to talk about and show you, so I better get to it without wasting any time talking about how long the video is going to be. Damn it. All right, before we get to all this stuff, I want to give a quick sponsored shout out to one of my viewers who wrote An Autistic Guy's Guide to Security. So this is 85 pages dealing with issues like situational awareness, home defense, how to respond to threats, how to recognize and deal with scams, and a variety of other things. This is a written taking the perspective of people with learning disability into account and their particular challenges, like how to not signal being an easy target and all of that. But it's really for everyone else as well. Everybody can read that and benefit from it. A lot of good advice in it. And uh, yeah, you can check it out. Links will be down below. And now we will look at how to respond to this spiky thread. Actually, no, we won't. This is something that another one of my viewers sent in to do tests with, uh, who wants to remain anonymous. So thank you, anonymous, you know who you are. Uh, this is a, well, obviously a spike club. Quite a mean mother. So I don't know anything about this, but what I do know is that I want to test it. I got an Ivan head as soon as I'm able to. And healing an injured tendon takes a very long time. So I'm still out of commission for who knows how long, at least a month, more likely two or three. Um, however, this I will probably be able to test sooner because I can use the right arm. And I've received a lot of stuff from others in the past couple of months. Uh, usually I don't really like to do the first impression kind of video anymore because it's it's kind of a tease and it kind of sucks to be shown something without seeing it in action. I haven't been able to do any of that lately. So since things have been piling up, I figured I should just show you a bunch of them. You know, out of respect for the people who send it to me. So this is the Warrior Tachi from Yomikuni.com. And so see, katanas occasionally make an appearance and <laughs> I don't hate them. I mean, it, it should be established by now. I've talked about the topic and, and all that. This is, um, this is a really nice looking blade. Uh, you won't be able to tell at a distance, I think, but it's got a really nice hum on. You can clearly see the, the tempering line. And it's a very nice blade with a, with a fuller on both sides. Uh, it's got a bronze tsuba. Uh, the blade is T10 tool steel. And so it's very ornate. It's a really pretty looking one. Definitely looking forward to trying it out. Um, there's one thing that bothers me that I can already tell you. This ornamental brass flower here is really annoying because it rubs on the fingers all the time. Uh, that's, that's the one thing that is a little bit irritating. But I do like that this is quite a bit longer than most katanas. So this is a pretty sizable blade. Copper scabbard, by the way. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave the link down below. Uh, keep in mind, of course, this is not a recommendation yet because obviously I haven't tried it out. I mean, I can tell you that based on the first impression, um, fit and finish and look and handling and all of that, especially at that price point, you can definitely expect quality. So I do expect this to do quite well, but uh, obviously it's not a final verdict yet. Um, so I got that for review, and I also got this very pretty sword. This is a Tai Chi Dao from Swords of Northshire, or Northshire. I think it's Northshire, but who knows? Inconsistent British pronunciations, well, for place names at least. And um, you may have seen this already. Did a live stream with Sword Sage where I showed this and he commented a little bit on it. So apparently this is not a historical design. This is um, you know, modern Tai Chi um, design that wasn't 
used in this form in history, and you can tell Western influence, like this sort of um, S-shaped guard outside of the butterfly swords wasn't really common in Chinese history. So this blade is made of 1095 steel, hand polished, and it's got brass fittings, an ebony scabbard, and this, when you pick it up, this is, this is crazy. You know, this looks like a pretty hefty sword, right? Overall, this is, it has quite a wide blade. You know, it's not excessively thick, but it's not exactly the thinnest thing you've ever seen. But this feels so light. And uh, this is, uh, what was it, like 1.3 something kilograms. So, you know, it would be a pretty standard weight for a longsword of similar size, for example. And this is so well balanced. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like that. This this feels like a kilogram, if not less. Really awesome. This is a very beautiful finish. Aside from the fact that it still has styrofoam bits stuck to it. So far, this has been my only complaint about it. It was shipped in a styrofoam box. Styrofoam debris everywhere. Me not pleased. But it's even got my logo. Check this out. Laser engraved into the blade. This is pretty freaking sweet and uh, very, very nice. The sword, like, superbly decorated. As I said, very well balanced, extremely sharp. Uh, and it's got, it's got a false edge, sharpened false edge here as well. So you can, you can cut with that too. I'm also gonna link this down below. Again, not a final verdict, just a first impression and First impression is definitely positive, but uh, it costs quite a pretty penny. So uh, it seems worth the price as far as I can tell so far, but don't faint when you check the price. But wait, there's more. This is made by Christian Yamandi. And it is, by the way, Yamandi. A few people thought that the name is actually I am Andy, uh, but no, it, it is a family name. A Dacian Fox. I already have a Fox, but this one here is a smaller version. Single-handed or, or kind of hand and a half. This is shorter, lighter, uh, in fact very light. I can quite easily move this around and this should be very interesting to try out. Like very beautifully finished blade. You can probably see that pretty well. It's a nice convex grind. Got some beautiful decorations here, and particularly on the scabbard. This is really freaking nice. So it comes with a, with a belt, and again, it's got my Viking helmet bear mascot on there, and yeah, a number of decorations. Really pretty, and like a very well-made wooden core, leather covered scabbard. Beautiful. I mean, this this is so far everything I've shown is beautiful. Okay, maybe this this would be the ugly duckling, but it's none of its fault. I mean, how uh, picture perfect, beautiful do you expect a spike club to be? But uh, yeah, this is all beautiful work, like really nice. And to accompany it, he also sent a Sika. This is pretty badass as well. So also decorations on the scabbard and. Grip is done the same way. The blade, this is one of the coolest knives I've ever had. And if you look at them side by side, I kind of want to dual wield them, you know, like rapier and dagger, except Fox and Sika. Really cool. So this, is, oh, and also he has a channel as well on YouTube. So I'm going to link that down below. You can check that out. Look at how cool that is. Sickle knife. All right. And I saved the craziest freaking thing for last. This is something that I designed and another one of my viewers, Jeremy Lethoul, if I pronounce his last name correctly, made it. He's, he's made stuff for me before. And uh, let's take a look what we've got here. How do you like that? 
the Skellagrim Reaper. So a lot of people have asked about scythes. Are they practical? You know, can they be used in, in combat? This one can. I mean, I think. So my designer put this curved blade on there for thrusts. So you can thrust straight forward and also for backhand cuts. This is double-edged, as is this. So not only will it slice on the inside, I keep bumping against something, not only will it slice on the inside, you could also do a cut like this with the outside of the blade, or even just thrust straight forward and do a, a slicing cut that way. Not to mention the point, of course. I think uh, Paulus Hector Meyer right now might have to change his britches. That's the guy who wrote an actual manuscript about fighting with sides and sickles, for that matter. Jeremy put a lot of work into this and it turned out bad ass. Like, <laughs> when I got this, um, first off, it was a gigantic awkward package. That's what she said! <laughs> this thing is, is crazy. The good kind of crazy. I like it. He made a, a curved handle for it, which is, fits it perfectly. And there's a butt spike. Well, butt cap, really. It's, it's only slightly pointy, but this would definitely be effective. And I can't wait to try this out. I really want to try this, but th this is going to take me a while before I'm able to wield a pole arm with both arms. Uh, some healing will have to be done, but I, I can't wait. And uh, I made this leather sheath here for it. And it's pretty rough. I, I could do some finishing work on it, but right now it's really just to frankly to make it safer in storage because this thing is is kind of monstrous to to handle and store and you know without damaging things but yeah really really cool the blade is made of 1075 steel by the way and the spike 1080 in case you were wondering and this is still not all I mean, this is all the stuff that I have with me here right now in person to show you but there's one more really awesome thing do you know Matt and Ilya from Baltimore Knife and Sword on the That Works channel. They're making a Venetian falchion for me right now. And what an awesome thing. They picked one of the most difficult designs they could have. And it, it looks fantastic. They, they've been making videos about the process of making it, which are super interesting. I watched all of them and commented on them. And I'll also link them down below. And I'm, I'm just amazed, I'm just blown away by that, that they would, you know, dedicate that much time to making something so awesome for me to test on the channel and show off and, and everything. I'm, I'm very humbled, just like I am by everything else that people give me, and it's, it's, it's freaking amazing. I'm speechless at times. You know, it's easy for me sometimes to get carried away focusing on the negative things, you know, the worries, you know, you know, the future of the channel and how things are going right now and how I'm not living up to what I, I should and all these things, particularly since in, in 2018 I've been regressing and I've been screwing up and I've injured myself and a number of things have not gone well, and it's it's mostly my own, in fact, it's all my own fault. I can't even, like, no excuses, it was all my own fault. And, you know, that makes, makes you doubt yourself at times, stuff like that. But then stuff like this happens. You know, people dedicate so much time and effort and money. Apparently, I must be doing something right, because they think it's it's worth the effort. I hope. I mean, otherwise, why would they do it, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, the cynical bastards among you might say something like, oh, they were just after the exposure, but they could get more exposure elsewhere. And you could tell that these people really care. I mean, craftsmen take pride in their art. I mean, at least I do hope that Matt and Ilya, for example, behind the camera are not just grumbling under their breath all the time. Oh, I can't believe that I'm stuck making something for this asshole. Oh, that would be pretty hilarious to think. 
Either way, I'm deeply appreciative and grateful. You guys are all awesome and I need to work harder to get my shit together, fix myself, do more awesome stuff on the channel, be more entertaining and all of that. So yeah, that's, that's really all I wanted to say. That and also um, in case you're one of those people who left Patreon because they disagree with their policies and everything. I'm now also on Subscribestar and a few people have already signed up, so that's gonna be linked down below as well. And I also very much appreciate everybody's support there. That's really the name of the game for today's video, appreciation. I, I'm just, I feel humbled and grateful for everything that people do and yeah, it's, it's amazing. What, what can I say? Okay, so that's enough rambling for now. Once again, thank you very much, everybody. You're awesome. What you've made is awesome. And I hope I'll do it justice by making awesome videos with it. Um, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks, and take care. Who wrote an autistic guide? The guide itself is not autistic, I think. I don't know, you have to ask him about that. <laughs>